dancing, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Long as I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose all winning, I'm a who that. Sports coma, yeah, this is where we do that. 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 Huh? Boogie like this, and I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Somebody please better help. Running this thing like Elf. Thank God every day I'm not a felt. Go to YouTube live with Big Q and the guys. If you ain't ride or die, the bandwagon get flipped. Been marching in, that was way for the ring. I was yelling out your shame for the championship. Fucking on town, duck down. Falcons, pluck, get shut down. Panthers ain't much to Touchdown. Touchdown. The vision really belong to us now. us now. So much hate on the Saints, you could probably tell. Ever since Bounty Gate hit the NFL, when things seem fishy, then you probably smell. The crooked referees are Roger Goodell. Yeah. Yeah. Running like this, and I'm a who that. Every day I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose all winning, I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, eh. Where we do that, where we do that, where we do that, eh. Boogie like this, and I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. We're listening to the sports coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You're now rocking with the sports coma. Big Q and the guys, where we have intense, entertaining, educating, and enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports fam. Fam, what's popping? What's going on with the Who That Nation? Appreciate you guys joining me for this. What, what day is it? <laughs> uh, this is it's, it's Wednesday. It's hump day, man. <laughs> Shout out to the fam. Appreciate y'all, man, being in this episode of the show. This one's entitled uh, Saints Inc. Uh, tight end Jesse James and fullback Jake Vargas. That's a football name for you right there, I tell you what. So shout out to the fam as we got all these people doing this. Ah! That's right. We got them all going crazy right now because the Saints continue to make solid move after solid move. We picked up a very good Backup blocking tight end, and man, let me tell you, the Saints not the Saints ain't playing no games, man. So they do perform uh, and, and get some excellent people out there in terms of depth. They get Jake Vargas to kind of compete with Prentice in the fullback room and to do this. So very positive signings. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a if you're a, a who that nation family member, a great saying tank tank. Let me tell you something. Y'all, the guys should be high, uh, very high in terms of your perspective on the Saints and their signings. You should really do that. I, I'm right on that, right? You ain't lying. Thank you. So this is the reality that the Saints are doing some very stellar moves. So let's cover this news note and item. Shout out to uh, the Saints. Uh, uh, let's say Saints Holmes. Hold on. I'm sorry, fam. My little stuff got in the way. All right. So anyway, to the Saints uh, News Network, shout out to the peeps. Out there, much love to them as they cover this one too. And we add this guy right here. So the Saints had two players today as the team announced the signings of tight end Jesse James and fullback Jake Vargas and the release of kicker Alex Quavedo. You know, he, uh, you know, you know, the Saints released one of the kickers. They still have the other guy. And of course, we talk about this today. James, who's 28 and only played in two games for the Browns last year due to bicep injury, had, had a previous stint with the Bears, Lions after pretty strong campaigns with the Steelers. As for Vargas, he saw some action in a couple of games with the Vikings and most recently on the Dolphins practice squad. So the Saints are carrying three kickers on the roster up until the release of Alex Quavedo to make room for that move. Hopefully we can see a little bit more of the Blake Groupe deal. He struggled some on Tuesday practice. Regardless, it's Will Lutz's job until it's not. The offense now has two fullbacks on the roster. We talked about that prior, like a couple of days ago, to give Adam Prentice some 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 uh, competition in that room. We haven't seen Taysom Hill on OTAs yet. Most of the work has been with Jawan Josta, Foster Moreau, and Lucas Kroll. Miller Forrestal has been present but not participating. Again, OTAs are strictly voluntary, and though these types of moves will be commonly leading up to training camp. So shout out to uh, Mr. Hendricks as he dropped the scoop on this one. And to give you a little information about Jesse James, you know, and, and listen, the Saints had flirtations with Jesse James before. Remember, several years ago, the Saints was trying to, to 
acquire Jesse James. And uh, ultimately, that was during the Sean Payton administration, but we get him now. Now, he's a big guy, 6'7", 260-plus pound tight end, big old guy. Coming here, as you can see, he has some really good solid years with the Steelers going to Detroit. And you can see his numbers on the screen right here. Let me show you the rest of his numbers. This is career statistics. 102 games played, 157 receptions on 229 targets for 1,522 yards. He averaged almost 10 yards per catch for his career with 12 touchdowns. So there you go. And like I said, his strength in his game, when you look at Jesse James, besides probably one of the coolest names on the Saints. <laughs> so we got we got Smoke Monday, we got Storm Norton, and we got Jesse James, man. Let me tell you something. That's one of the coolest names there with the Saints, man. So he'll more than likely provide more like a blocking tight end in the red zone weapon to have a six foot seven tight end is pretty good, you know, to be honest with you. So we are definitely we are definitely doing some right stuff now. It does really make the tight end room look uh, really stout, having Jesse James there. It provides some real competition there. Now, the question is, Taysom Hill, he operates with the flex position. That means even though he's situated as a tight end, if if Jesse does make the roster, where does that kind of place Taysom? Now, we'll see how it goes because a lot of people feel like Jesse James is a solid signing, but that might necessarily mean he'll make the active roster. It could just be a guy headed uh, to the squad. So we'll, we'll see how it all goes. And then we look at the other signing of Jake Vargas. And this is the fullback, 6'2", 250 pounds out of North Carolina in his first year. And I remember he had spent some time in 2021 with the, I mean, excuse me, 2020 with the Minnesota Vikings. He also had a little <clears throat> burn with the, the Dolphins a little bit there. So we get these guys to come in and provide depth for the Saints. As you can see, we're going to look at the depth chart right here and see that the Saints, and you got to give them credit. It's just not a, a top-notch glaring signing, but getting these guys to kind of add more competition to an already stout depth chart is very positive. As you can see, the Saints have uh, help everywhere. You look at the quarterback position, the running back position, wide receiver is, is very uh, deep in the game. You take a look at this un, uh, unofficial depth chart right here provided by ESPN. See Mike Rashid, Shahid, Chris Olavi there in the first, as the starters, the second guys. They see Traquan Smith with A.T. Perry and James Washington there. Brian Edwards, Keith Kirkwood. Uh, Kirk Merritt is, a, is, is listed here as a wide receiver, but they've been having him at the running back position. And it rightfully so because it's a lot of competition there. Quan Baker, Shaq Davis, Malik Flowers, Bringing up the rear tight end position. Jawan Johnson, Foster Moreau, Taysom Hill is there, and Jesse James is on the squad. And you see the fullback position with Adam Prentice and Jake Boggess. So you look at the rest of the offensive line there with Penning, Pete, McCoy, Ruiz, and Ramchek. The backups, Hurst, Throckmorton, and the rest of the guys. So, you know, man, I'll tell you what, man. You look at the quarterback, the running back, wide receiver, the tight end position. The Saints have done a good job of fortifying these positions. Now, of course, as we get closer and closer to creeping ever so close to the season and getting to the camps that, you know, the the big camps where you see all of our guys right there, you got to be stoked for the Saints offense. You really do. Not to mention the fact that, you know, it's a big component. So when you sign, you re-sign Jawan Johnson, you uh, bring on Foster Monroe, right, fam? Uh, and then you bring Jesse James along with Taysom there in the flex position. What's really intriguing and interesting is that we talk about Coach Clancy, who the Saints brought in as the new tight ends coach. That's the caveat here, fam. When we talk about Coach Clancy, who will be coaching the tight end position, and he has a really stout and excellent, excellent portfolio and resume when it talks about dealing with guys from the tight end position, we're talking about old school suckers like LG Crumpler. We helped out. And it's just like, it's going to be really cool to see that, man. That's a big part of the fun times that we're going to see here. Cause we got these new coaches here, man. And, and Clancy Barone is a guy that has a, a, a pretty damn impressive resume in terms of coaching up the tight end. So I'm going to really be, looking at Mr. Barone and seeing what kind of moves that he can make. 
and improving. Now, he talking about Barone. He had four players that he worked with that was vo- voted to the Pro Bowl with four different teams. The Falcons, he had LG Crumpler. The Chargers, he had Antonio Arsenio Gates. He had uh, Julius Thomas from the, from the Broncos. Y'all remember him? And Kyle Rudolph from the Vikings. That's who Clancy Barone coached up. So those are some pretty good players. And the Saints have Jawan Johnson there, Foster Monroe. And they have something to work with in the tight end group. So I'm really excited with Coach Clancy Barone being in here. So, yeah, Tuck Graf says, Jesse James, I like the name. I like the game. Yeah, he's a hardcore blocking guy, man. Uh, and that's the thing. So he also does what he do. So, yeah, it's going to be cool, man. I'm really happy for what the moves the Saints are making. And uh, shout out to my boy, Scoob, uh, who reached out to me. He was dropping some game. And I agree with what he was saying in terms of Dennis Allen. We talked about this on uh, yesterday's stream on Patreon. For the family members that want to do that, you can uh, join us by looking in the link tree. The link is there for our Patreon. We highlight we look at, uh, we do film study, and then it's a lot of lock content that's available on our Patreon or become a member of the channel. What's intriguing and interesting, we kind of go over and talk about Dennis Allen and what makes Dennis Allen different. They're not really, a lot of the media people are not really kind of pinpointing or going at Dennis Allen saying, kind of going over and say, well, Dennis, let me ask you something. What make you, make, what make you different? This year. Now we had all these new players. We got new coaches coming in, but what did you change internally about yourself as a coach? What did you learn going forward? How you can improve yourself as a head coach in this league? We need to have that type of discussion to get more analytical or get inside of his mind to see exactly what moves he's making. But if you look in, in terms of his mind, if you look at the team, we talked about it about last year's team. He had uh, a lot of Sean Payton guys there. This year is his guys. If you notice his interviews, he's a lot more relaxed, a little bit more confident. Uh, You look in his eyes and see that he is in a better space in terms of comfort. So you got a lot of these guys that feel good about Dennis Allen that he gets along with. One of those guys is Mr. Joe Woods. We're going to play an interview for in a moment to let you hear. I don't know if you ever heard him before, but I never played him on this this, uh, platform before. But we're going to listen to him today and get his some pick his brain and see how he sees the game very smart guy and he owes a lot to Dennis Allen Dennis Allen and gave him jobs before (laughs) before several of these guys that he knows so Dennis Allen has Joe Woods and Joe Woods could be the key to this whole thing what do you mean Q Joe Woods is the defensive coordinator the Saints did not have a defensive coordinator last year yes they did Q they had uh Ryan Nilsom and uh Coach Chris Richard, as they had him split, none. They didn't have nobody there. <laughs> that guy was a defensive line coach. The other guy was a secondary coach, and he couldn't pick between the two to say, "I want you to be the guy." No, this is different. You actually got a person that's actually occupying that position, while another guy coaches the defensive line. Another guy runs the secondary. That's a big weight over off of Dennis Allen's shoulder because what it allows everybody to kick up and report back to Joe Woods and Joe Woods then goes to Dennis Allen. So if any discipline or anybody needs to be gotten on Joe Woods handling on the defensive side and the, the offensive guys handling on a side, you see what I'm saying here? Because that's not his strong suit. He's not a confrontational dude. He kind of shrieks away from that. He's not, he's not a confrontational guy. So having a Joe Woods, who's a, per, a people person, a really smart guy about the schematics and schemes of how things go from a defensive standpoint, that's kicking up and reporting back to Dennis Allen, who Dennis Allen respects and really likes a lot to the point where he can get game from and they can kind of, you know, kind of come together and decide on which plays are best for defense. You see what I'm saying? It takes some a lot of that off his shoulders. Is that why he's looking like that? You feeling a little bit more relaxed? Here, Joe Woods, this could make a lot of sense. So we'll see if this could work here because it does take a lot off of his shoulders to have an actual person there and not two people that's doing two jobs. Like you have the defensive line coach. No, the defensive line coach is coaching the defensive line. That's it. Secondary guy coaches the secondary. And you got an actual person there as a defensive coordinator who will get the blame, even though Dennis Allen says, I'll call the defense. I'll call the plays for the defense. And Joe Woods handles everything else. That's a big deal. Will it work here? Hmm, we'll see. We'll see. But he most certainly definitely looks 
uh, more refreshed, and hopefully it'll work out for the man, man. You know what I'm saying? Because if it don't, you know what time it is. <laughs> it's put up a shut up, baby. It's put up a shut up. He ain't lying. Thank you. So anyway, let's move forward, man. Let's keep it going. We're going to get and talk. There he is. We're going to talk to the man himself right here and hear from this interview right here from Mickey. This was on Sirius Radio, XM Radio the other day. I'm going to play a snippet of this interview. I was trying to find the whole damn thing to play and react to. I couldn't find it. But if y'all know where the entire interview, uh, just put it in the, the comment section and I'll react to it later. But this is a little bit from Mickey Loomis uh, uh, talking about the Saints. It starts the with the relationship that, uh, that nah. Dennis Allen had with, uh, uh, with Derek. You know, he was, he was there in, uh, um, in Oakland when they drafted him and, and was thought highly of him. We've all thought highly of him as a player over the years. And, and look, an opportunity comes up. You know, we talked to um, uh, Las Vegas about a trade initially, and, and I know Derek wanted to go through the process and, and explore all the options before he made a decision. And, and uh, so we didn't, we didn't end up getting a, a trade done, but it all worked out because um, we ended up with a player without having to give up any competition. This is a largely remade squad in many ways from the one that we were used to seeing with Drew Brees and, and, and Sean Payton at the helm. So take us yeah, to where you are right now. Do yeah, real look, fragile, I think man. we've got, uh, you know, we've got a younger team overall, and yet I think we've got a good mix of veterans. You know, we've got Cam Jordan and Ryan Ramchek mm-hmm. and, and uh, Tyron Matthew. You know, we've we've got some veteran players to, to balance out the youth that, at, at other positions. Um, look, I'll be honest with you. We're counting on a couple guys that, that have missed time with injury. You know, Mike Thomas has missed the better part of the last two years. And, you know, we're counting on him to get healthy and, and get back to his form. We're counting on Marshawn Lattimore, who missed, uh, you know, six or eight games last year That's with right. uh, some some uh, fractured ribs and, and uh, lacerated kidney. And so, look, we're, we're counting on those guys to get Good back Lord. and perform at the level that they've they've performed at in the past. And, and then, you know, we've got some young guys like Chris Olave and, and uh, Trevor Penning and Eric McCoy and Cesar Ruiz, who who – are what we think are ascending players and and expect improvement and and uh you know we'll see what happens Mickey Loomis ladies and gentlemen and uh this this is really cool like I said the 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 game plan between the Saints right because we know at the end of the season they kind of they ran from the family base (laughs) they really did they ran but what they were able to do in terms of get on the same page they've actually went beyond to make the Saints offense and defense, uh, you know, to, to give the guy everything he possibly needs. I mean, it's all, all this is for Dennis Allen. All this is this is the quarterback he took in the in, in the draft high. Um, these are his people. A lot of these defensive guys, some of these guys that you're bringing in a lot, these are his folks. So the Saints have really went above and beyond, even to the point where bringing John Gruden to the team, you know, adding and bringing John Gruden to the squad. That was another big one. That was really astronomical in terms of what they're trying to do. Now, there was a bit of backlash for that, and I'm, I'm going to probably get you guys uh take on that, you know, later on. Uh, You know, but the reality is, is that when you look at what the Saints are doing, it, you know, it and, and I'm a tough grader, you know, I'm a hell of a grader. I'm not going to tell you no different. I'm a tough grader. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm, I'm just saying <laughs> I'm a tough ass grader. And even me with all my toughness and my, and, and, and my roughness, I still got to give the Saints high marks, even though the rest of the league is not doing that because they don't believe in Dennis Allen because Dennis Allen truthfully hasn't really given us something to really talk about in terms of regular season wins. All this is still off season. And remember, I'm feeling pretty good in the vibration and it's very positive. But at the same time, fam, I'm looking at it and I'm saying to myself, I love what they're doing from a free agency and draft standpoint, undrafted standpoint and signing these guys and fortifying the depth of these position groups. But at the same time, I'm still being very patient about what I'm seeing, but being optimistic at the same time saying, okay, all right. I like that. Yeah. That's what I'm, yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Y'all guys are hitting it. All right. Yeah. Cool. All right. You guys are crushing it. And then when the season comes on, that's when you have to take all of that talent and then, move it on to the regular season and be begin to accumulate wins. In this first year, I really do believe that the Saints will gain some traction. 
depending on how the Saints offense gels, how fast it gels, I still think the defense will be good. I just think the offense will be better. I really do think that. I think, and it's not it totally on car in terms of the offense. The Saints gave them a mean running game and some security blankets for tight ends. We got wide receivers all over the place, and it's only a matter of time to see how these guys kind of get it together. But really, if the Saints can just re, just keep it simple, reestablish that play action at first, we can just start doing all the type of stuff that we love to do that we wasn't able to do last year, the consistency, a lot of positive stuff. So, yes, very cautious optimism from my end, but still in all cautious, very optimistic, by the way. So for the family members say, Q, what you think? I'm giving it some thumbs up. I'm got, I, got to tell, I got to tell you, baby. I got to tell you. Anyway, let's move on to the next thing, man. Let's hear from Jameis. Jameis back up. Uh, when, uh, well, he says, Saints back up. Jameis Winston believes he still is capable of starting in the NFL. And of course, Jameis knows what he does. Let's, let's peep out what Jameis had to say, family, if y'all didn't hear this. Here you go. Jameis. Is it a little different this year? Like, not, I mean, we kind of saw he's the starter, you know, is it different, like, when you come in, like, knowing that you're out of the backup? Oh, no, the preparation stays the same. You know, uh, I, I, I'm still preparing for whenever my opportunity does uh, present, present itself because I still believe I'm a strong quarterback in this in this league. But right now, my role is to serve Derek and, uh, and be the best team I can uh, to whip my role on this team. Jamie, this is the first time we've had a chance to talk to you. What? Yeah. To that end of, of wanting to be a starting quarterback in the league, what made this the right situation for you? Oh, well, I, it's just very familiar. Uh, I trust this organization. Uh, I, I, I believe in this team that we have a great defense, great offense. And uh, and last year, you know, we had a lot of opportunities to break over some games. But uh, with the addition of Derek, I think he's going to bring a, a lot of good things to this team. How do you feel? Uh, I'm getting healthy, man. But yeah. I, I feel good. I'm still working. It's going to be a working process. But uh, I'm just excited that it's football season. I'm excited that uh, we get to go out there and toss the ball around and uh, everyone just is back. You know, it's getting closer to my dream, man. Which, which injury has sort of still has to get back to 100%? Which, which ones? Well, just uh, I think the main thing is my overall health. Uh, so I'm just going to continue to, to work on that. I, I can't. Uh, really get particular with you on because uh, over overcompensation of other things has sure. opened up other stuff. But uh, the main thing is just focusing on uh, getting back holistically healthy so I can be my best uh, when the opportunity presents itself. What have been your early impressions of Derek? Uh, I think he's a fun-loving guy. Uh, I think uh, he he's a great he's a great leader. He he's uh he's relatable to everybody. Uh, he's high energy uh, and he's just very bright. What are some things about him that you learned that you didn't know? Like before he got in? Uh, it's, not, it's not much that I, that I, that I didn't know uh, about him. Me and him are pretty close until when we came into this league. So I always uh, look from afar, I always admire him as a, as a quarterback, and he's done some great things. Uh, I'm just happy that he gets the opportunity uh, to have a great defense and uh, get a chance to team up with, with Pete Carmichael in this offensive scheme and, and, and do what he does best, and that's throw that ball. You, you said you trust this organization. You're familiar with this organization. Was there anything that had to be mended or sit down and talk and feel good about, you know, where you two were after last year? I know there was some question about, you know, you know your role and, and mm -hmm. how it was communicated to you and stuff. What, well, what made you feel really good about this? Well, well because I think whether it's, it's upstairs or in – and in, in my like my accountability, my accountability is to the best dependability is availability. And uh, the past you know three years or so, I've I've been banged up, you know. So uh, the leadership, you know, they have to continue to to move forward. And uh, and I just know uh, when I first got here into this organization that we were gonna have you know some of the top players, we we're gonna have uh, some some of the best coaches. So uh, in in terms of trusting this organization, I just know this organization, uh, especially uh, during the Sean Payton era. Uh, has been very successful, and uh, Dennis has brought uh, has basically carried that over uh, because he is uh, built to be a successful head coach. So for me, my accountability is just focusing on my health and being ready when that opportunity uh, presents itself. Is there anything you're doing differently? All right, that's Jameis Winston. I'm gonna play a little bit more of this fan, but this is what Jameis does, man. Jameis is, has grown leaps and bounds since coming here. Uh, has pretty much fell in love with the culture. Uh, still feels as he's that guy. And the truth is, the truth of the matter is, Jameis could have definitely went back to Tampa Bay if he wanted to. They have freaking Baker Mayfield over there. <laughs> so he could have went back to Tampa and started over Baker Mayfield. I mean, I don't even think they would have gotten Baker Mayfield if Jameis Winston, you know, he'd have decided to leave. They would have picked him up. So thank you, KB. Shout out to KB. Says, I'm excited for the season. 
Uh, hashtag I'm a hoot. <laughs> Shout out to KB. Much love to you, Queen. Appreciate you. Much love to the fam, man. Appreciate y'all being up in this thing. Scoob, Jerry, uh, JT, everybody, man. Thank y'all. Dane, I see you. Queen Slade, I see you. Reginald Tron, much love, fam. Ro, St. Doug, what's happening? Darrell, everybody. Lori, I see you, fam. Uh, much love, brother Gundam. Big Ken, T-Roy, everybody, man. Appreciate y'all being up in this thing. Daniel, I see you, fam. Who that? So, yeah, Jameis doing his thing, fam. You hear Jameis uh, talking up being positive, man. And, you know, things happen in the NFL, and I, I most certainly want to see Derek Carr. I think uh, the Saints offense with Derek Carr, what he brings, you study the film, like I've talked about it, he brings explosives, explosive plays back because of his deep ball ability. He throw that damn deep ball like it's an intermediate pass. I mean, it's just easily just drops it out there. And it forces defense to create space underneath. That's our game. Once we get that, you're giving Jamal Williams, Elvin Kamara, Kendra Miller, you're giving them space. We, we're going to eat, eat your lunch. We're going to eat your lunch, your breakfast, and your damn uh, dinner. That's what we're going to do. You're going to be starving Marvin around that piece. Anyway, let's finish up with James. Uh, Training-wise to help with you. To help you help you? Like this. Uh, the, the the biggest thing is like man, I just had I just had some rough injuries. Uh, it, it takes time with, with those things, but uh, obviously just my training regimen uh, isn't as strenuous as it has as it has been uh, over the past few years. Hit the like button uh, just for to, me, fam. To get some mobility things and, and things like that. But uh, what's important is that we back playing football uh, and we're here. So uh, once you're here, you gotta gotta show up and show out. James, is there, is there anything that you learned about yourself since you signed with the Saints for a year? Uh, well, I mean, I, I think I learned something about myself every single year. Uh, but uh, one thing that just continues to, to, to show up is uh, that this game is bigger than you. Uh, so Absolutely. Uh, humility and understanding uh, where you at uh, in terms of in the present moment, being able to fulfill and be all in or where you at where your feet are in the moment uh, is very important instead of uh, worrying about your past or worrying about your future, uh, but focusing on where you're at right now and, and taking advantage uh, of that moment. I was Absolutely, you. man. Jameis Winston, man, dropping game, and you're right. The game is bigger than you. It's a team game, man. But, at, it, but you know, as an individual, you fit a role for the team and you, do your, you, do, you handle your business, you know. And, that, and that's a big part of the game. Love that mentality and that attitude because uh, Jameis was a starting quarterback last year. It took a lot, and it shows a lot for a man or a person, period, to go through with Jameis Winston with, with the Saints last year, get disrespected publicly, shut down for the rest of the year, very, very uh, on a, you know, on a very petty style, and then – get lied to, deceived, and still stay with the team. That's big. Because most of the people, if you work at a job and the boss lied to you about your job or getting a raise or whatever the case may be, man, you're looking for a new gig. Jameis, you know, he's playing it, you know, cool. You know, he's staying with the team. He accepted the deal. And I think it's it was huge for both because, at you know, I'm, I'm a historian of these matters, and I remember – when they signed Derek Carr, that was a split right down the middle between the Derek Carr folk and the Jameis Winston folk. And when Jameis re-signed, that split disappeared like it never was there. I remember all that. So getting that happened, that brought the team together, it created harmony there. And I just love that. The fact that he is, because he knows it's a physical game. If Carr does miss a few games, uh, you know, C-19 might pop up again. Uh, he, he, hopefully he doesn't get hurt. But if he does, we got Jameis there. And Jameis will be 100%. Healthy. You can look at him during the uh, OTAs. He didn't have anything on him. He was out there throwing, and he looked as healthy as I've seen in a long time. So yeah, this is this is a credit to Jameis Winston. Shout out to him and how he's been doing his thing. All right. So anyway, let's go to the next one, fam. Let's tune this one up here. And I wanted to play this because a lot of people might have not heard from Joe Woods, and this is Joe Woods, man. And Joe Woods is one of those type of old school defensive coaches, man. Really smart dude and really good at explaining the game. So for those who didn't get an opportunity to listen to Joe Woods, here it is, Joe Woods. We're going to fix it, and that's kind of the deal with this defense, right? Absolutely. Um, I know this defense just from coaching against them, and I've known DA for a long time. Um, so for me, I'm just trying to come in, just teach the proper technique, the techniques that he wants, and just uh, try to clean some issues they had last year. 
the run game wasn't as good as as it's been in the past. Has that yeah. been an emphasis for you? Absolutely. And when it comes to the run game, it's all 11. Uh, it starts up front, obviously, with the D-line in terms of gap control, linebackers hitting their fits. But we play a big part in that because of our scheme. So whether it's the safety being involved in the run fit or the corner in the crack we place, it takes all 11 to play good run defense. Will you play as much nickel as they played here in the past? Yes. I'm definitely getting the feel uh, versus multiple personnel groups. But you always want to put as much speed on the field as you can. And I think we have some very talented defensive backs. So I think those packages will be good for us. Have you always been a big nickel guy? Yes. Uh, nickel, dime, uh, different places I've been. But same philosophy, just put the best athletes you can on the field. Guys that you know can match up and cover. Uh, let you do more things in your coverage package. The fact that you have such a comfort level with the head coach, mm -hmm. how much do you think that makes things better? Big, big, big question. I think my main job here, you know, is to coach the defensive backs, but at the same time make it easy for him. And that's making sure the defense is run the way he sees it uh, from a coverage tool standpoint, from a coverage technique standpoint. Point. And I understand it from being with them back in uh, 2014. All right, so I'm going to finish this up, but did you catch that? He said the, the, what he's been, when he's come here, is he wants to make it easy for Dennis Allen. We talked about that. He, uh, Joe Woods says to coach the DBs. So he'll be, and, and we know that was his specialty, but he'll be coaching up the defensive backs along with Coach Robinson and the secondary coach. So, and try to make it as easy as he possibly can. So whatever happens, and Joe Woods is the D man. He, he's the boss of the defense. Uh, in terms of everybody, you know, has to listen to him. So he operates in that role. So it'll be interesting to see how well this works if it is taking the pressure off Dennis Allen in terms of from a coaching standpoint because he has pressure from the entire Who That Nation on his shoulder and he needs to produce. So you learn from him? A lot, a lot. Um, he is – the one thing with DA is he's very loyal. Um, he tells you exactly what he wants you to do. So you're not sitting back guessing – um, you know what the expectation levels are. Um, you know exactly what he wants you to do, and I really appreciate that from him. When he reached out to you, home. You talking about the same dude? <laughs> we talk very loyal. Must not be a quarterback thing. I, I, he's a defensive guy, so I, 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 there it is. How long did it take you to accept? Uh, you know, I was waiting. I had a couple other job offers, and uh, my wife, uh, she was back in Oakland with me. And she, she was the one who told me, if you get a chance to go to New Orleans, you better go. So I just sat and wait. That's and smart I was, lady. I was sitting and waiting, and then the things worked out. And as soon as he called me, I was there. Good thing when you listen to your wife, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. She's been right a lot. <laughs> you ain't lying. She felt good about this situation. Yes. Yeah, she had a great uh, relationship with uh, Coach Allen's wife, Allison. Um, we had a really good experience when we were out there in Oakland. So when this opportunity came about, uh, I was very excited to take it. A lot of new parts here, but mm -hmm. still a lot of really good guys coming back. Can this group be elite again? I think that I think great question. Uh, just because of the players, I feel like you know there's some new guys up front, but I think there's a lot of talent up front. Um, we have size. We're very physical. Um, I think at the linebacker position, those guys have been there for a long time. And the secondary, I think the guys that played last year, now it's their second year. Plus, we drafted some talent, brought some talent in. So I just think it's a matter of guys getting reps and just getting that continuity as a group. But I definitely feel the talent here. I know all this all the time at this time of the year we are about complimentary football. Yes. How, how can you guys help each other? Well, it's always that way. You know, I think for me the goal for defense for the defense is always get get the ball back for the offense or score. So if we put them on short fields, give them an opportunity to score, along with our anticipation or excuse me participation on special teams, it all works together. How do you make the turnover happen? Technique, you know, um, takeaways come in bunches, but they come when you play good technique. And it's a factor of rushing coverage, whether it's four-man rush or you're bringing pressure, and guys ex executing in the back end. So as long as we're playing our technique, uh, playing fast, the turnovers will come. Is your you see Joe Woods, and, and this is, I think that's Ed Daniels talking to him. Yeah, it's Ed Daniels, old school. Shout out to Ed Daniels, man. Been doing this for a long time, man. Shout out to Ed. The, the reality is you see how Ed Daniels, who's really smart, is firing off these questions about defense to Joe Woods. And Joe Woods is like going back at him. He's not doing a political shuffle where he has to redirect or misdirect you to a different point or topic. He's hitting these things straight on, has good football acumen. 
like I said, him and Dennis Allen gets along very well. He's the defensive coordinator. He is running the defense. DA calls the plays for the defense. That's what they told us. So it appears to be on par for that. And Joe Woods, like I said, he's a guy that's easy to talk to, real smart with it, good at breaking the game down to you should see footage of him out on the field talking to players and breaking down and telling DBs what he want them to do and explaining schematic schemes and positions where he's supposed to be, stuff like that. And the dude is really smart. Let's finish up. For a guy on this field in the little time that you've been here that has surprised you? Um, it's early. So for me, I'm looking at everybody um, from the front to the back. And there's guys that flash at times, um, but specifically in the back end, I think there's been some young guys that we brought in. Uh, Adrian Fry's done a good job. Uh, Jordan, um, the last name from uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Third, Howden. You know? yeah. uh, Howden, excuse Howden. me, Howden. Yeah. He's done a good job, very smart, executes his responsibility. Um, and then, uh, I'm trying to think here, Lante Taylor. That's my first exposure to him. I saw Paulson for a little while. Roby, so different guys flash at different times and different things. Yeah, I work with Roby, um, coach. Again, I think we have a lot of talent back there. So, you seem like a very calm, measured person. Is that always the case, or will you get on guys a little bit? No, I, I try to be. I'm more nervous here standing in front of this camera than I am on the football field. <laughs> but I think you do a lot of your coaching in the classroom. You do a lot of your coaching um, in practice. And then when it comes to the game, you put all the work in, so you want to have a sense of calm. Uh, you know, when the bullets are flying. So that's always been me as, as a person, as a coach. So I'm going to try to stay that way. How involved will you be in the play calling? You know, right now, DA still calling it. Uh, we've had some discussions, you know, privately, just in terms of how things are going to go. But for me, it's to make sure that the operation is good um, with the coaching staff, um, with the defensive unit, uh, help prepare in terms of game planning, um, some things I can help him with that I see. Uh, but he'll continue to call it. And as we move forward, you know, I'll get involved as much as he needs me to. All right. All right, Joe Woods, fam. Straight, straight like an arrow, giving you the game. Real mild, man. I told us, like, family, y'all going to really like Joe Woods, man. Going to really like him. Really good, smart guy. Modest guy. Really good at breaking the game down. And, and the players are going to love Joe Woods, man. He's a football coach. He's the type of coach. He don't spit in your face and. Uh, you know, when you're fussing, there, ah, you need to be over there. No, that ain't Joe Woods. Joe Woods, as you can see, a mild man, an easy dude, pretty cool guy. You would love to have him as your defensive coordinator. He told you pretty much, you know, Dennis Allen, like we said, he's, his job is to run the defense, take that off of Dennis Allen. And he would definitely get some feedback from Dennis Allen. Dennis Allen is, uh, think as much as I think about Joe Woods in terms of how smart he is and, and how articulate he is with, articulate what he is with the game and such – he would definitely include him in that as well. You would definitely want to have that type of relationship with your defensive coordinator to help just to have some input on the play calling on the defense. So love. I, I like Joe Woods, man. What can I say, man? Real cool dude, man. I hope y'all do too, man. Not bad at all. I, and then of course we're going to uh, take one from the wire. The saints finally aren't ranked among the NFL dead money lenders. Well, let me tell you something. I told you. It was taking a while, but the Saints finally aren't ranked among the NFL dead money lenders. They aren't top five. They aren't even top 10 for once the Saints have a very manageable, manageable sum of salary cap resources left over from past contracts. Per the cap over the caps estimates, the Saints rank number 12. How about that? Around the league with 24 and a half million tied up in defunct deals with their former players. The bulk of it accounted or pass restructures and defensive linemen, David on your model over 10 mil, Marcus Davenport, 7.6. There are also a couple of recent draft picks who left dead money uh, hits behind, like quarterback Ian Book over 300 grand, tight end Adam Troutman, the fish man over 200 grand, defensive lineman Jordan Jackson, 132 grand. And he says, now let's be clear, 24 and a half million is a lot of money getting better production out of those draft picks and managing contract situations. Veterans would have curbed the cost. I think they gave up too soon on Jordan Jack Jackson, to be honest with you. Y'all remember him, the defensive tackle out of Air Force, but it's a steep drop from where they've been. It should be noted that it's uh, almost 11 percent of the 2023 salary cap this time last summer in the wake of the defensive uh, back Malcolm Jenkins retirement, the Saints had a staggering $33.3 million dead money charge, which ranked sixth highest in the NFL, almost 60 per 16% of the 2022 salary cap. That's comparable to the 300 uh, to the 33.7 million they shouldered in 21, taking up over 18% of the 21 
salary cap. Saints have expressed a desire this offseason to begin managing the salary cap more responsibly so they aren't paying so much money towards guys who aren't on their roster. This is a positive step in the right direction. Yeah, I, I, well, let me tell you something. Didn't I tell you I was going to manage that cap back to the middle? So you guys, I can't tell you. You guys better start believing. This is a positive step in the right direction. It'll pay off in a big way in recent years ahead. New Orleans currently sits under 2023 salary cap by about 11 million, give or take a couple of hundred thousand dollars. And they're in good shape to add more experienced talent as the off season continues, baby. So there you go. So a lot of positive, the money, the acquisition of talent and players and coaches. Let us not forget the coaches. We just played Joe Woods, love Joe Woods. They had coach Robinson at the secondary that coach Woods will work with in, in, collaboration with Clancy Barone, a new tight ends coach. You got a new defensive line coach uh, and Ty Grantham that they added. They have some Jari Evans as an assistant coach to go along with coach Doug Marone. The saints have added some very experienced coaches to the staff. How does that turn out? Plus the maturation of Cody Burns in the wide receiver room. We are looking pretty good there. We still was able to keep coach Ronald Curry, the passing game coordinator and, and, uh, you know, in combination with Pete Carmichael there, hopefully he gets more intake from him along with Carr and how we uh, guide the team from an offensive standpoint. But a lot of pressures on Pete Carmichael, an offensive unit to stay steady and be a top five, top 10 unit. And I think they have what it takes to be that and more, baby. Let me tell you something. All right. So anyway, let's keep going, fam. We're going to hit our final article right here. And I want to play this for you guys. Give me a second here. Let me, uh, let me see. I'm going to play this for you guys. So hold on here. Let me see how you guys hold on. Here. I'm gonna play this for you guys. Uh, tell me what you think about this. This is a snippet from uh, WWL Radio. This is Detillier breaking down. Uh, you know the Saints bringing in John Gruden. Tell me what you think about it because I'm getting mixed emotions from the Who That Nation. I want y'all to tell me how y'all feel once y'all hear this. Here we go. Things that gets brought up a lot over the last couple of days has been the fact that the Saints have brought in John Gruden. And you got to understand in the past, uh, before John even got back into coaching, he was a regular here with he was buddy <laughs> with, with, with Sean, Sean Payton. Payton. They coached together in the Eagles with the, way with back with Philadelphia. in the day. Yeah, and yeah. they brought in, I, well, I've seen Tom Coughlin here, Jim Mora, Mike Martz. Uh, I think it's only been brought up because of the controversy, what happened with Gruden. It's not so much because these guys, a lot of the older coaches, they like to stay connected in the business well, and the fact well, his connection to Derek Carr. Well, you could be a paid consultant or you could be a consultant. Now, I think he probably volunteered to come out to the Saints because, like you said, uh, he's very familiar with Derek Carr. Pete Carmichael, why? Because it's like a fraternity who you network with. Why wouldn't you want to know, uh, you know, like through through the games and what was the game, the plays like Derek Carr really had the utmost success? So why wouldn't they do that if they have that opportunity? And, it's not like you're hiring them. And, the, I mean, and Dennis brought it up in the press conference is that we're not changing our offense because Gruden no, is no. – But he can maybe give us a little tidbit of something. Mike, it might be a handful of tidbits. It might be yeah. something in critical down and distance, maybe like two-minute offense or something. That uh, It might be a handful of tidbits. You take notes, say, oh, we're well, we going to try that and see how that works where Derek Carr is at within our scheme. Now, if you're a conspiracy theory guy, and you know, this day and age, you have all of those kind of people in society. Oh, no, no, let me tell you, it's, everything is a conspiracy. But now, I can tell you this, Dennis Allen knows he has to win. He knows you can't go three straight seasons without being in the postseason. Pete Carmichael has to be successful as an offensive coordinator without Sean Payton. So Pete Carmichael wants to succeed. So I wouldn't be surprised in the future. Now I'm looking at 2024. I don't think John Gruden's done that uh, I could see John Gruden potentially coming back before he could be a head coach again, maybe being like an offensive coordinator. No, uh, the emails, uh, I think we are forgiven society. You might say, oh, no, Bobby, uh, Gruden went over the line. But uh, a lot of people probably send texts or emails that they're not proud of. And then so you held accountable the rest of your life. You can ask for forgiveness, whatever. So that's why. I wouldn't be surprised he goes back to TV. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's why John. Look, look, he was outstanding on ESPN on, on Monday night. Like he was getting paid big bucks. Now they're really getting paid 
the big bucks, were they trying to cut back? I look at Tony Romo. I think he had to take a pay cut, but I think Troy Aikman's still making about eighteen twenty million with Monday Night Football. But that's a different tangent, but story. But uh, looking at Gruden, he didn't forget football because he got in trouble, Mike, and he's familiar uh, with Derek Carr. So yeah, why wouldn't you want to pick their brains? But it's like, oh, you wouldn't believe the number of people that have stopped me. Bobby, what do you think? The, the Saints hired John Gruden. And I just like, I was like oh. it's like I almost pretend I didn't hear it. I want to walk away. And I, go, and I just turn around and I say, no, they didn't hire John Gruden. He's like a consultant. You have a consultant in different business. You might have a consultant in coastal erosion. Okay, yeah, I have a consultant how, in engineering, and, 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 in the lawyer business, Mike, doctor you, in business. You've been a consultant yeah, before. And so. Uh, but when you're dealing, uh, look uh, with the water in Jackson, how, how they wanted you to go be a consultant, trying to turn that around. I wouldn't be surprised if Flint, Michigan called you up. Mike, uh, I know you experienced uh, dealing with. Uh, okay. All right. All right. Anyway, um, what do you guys think, man? Put it in the comment section and let you know. If the Saints hired John Gruden, I, I think I polled the family members uh, a couple of shows ago when this broke, and people were misreporting the fact that the Saints hired John Gruden as an assistant. And I said, no, they didn't. They didn't hire him as an assistant. That's not what the reports were saying. Word on the street was he was in there for one time, and then that was it. He was in there uh, trying to assist and give giblets of information on how the Saints could – uh, used car in this in this in the Saints uh, Sean Payton style West Coast system. That's what they were trying to do. <clears throat> so, but with that being said, the the informational aspect of John Gruden coming in there to, to tell Pete Carmichael and in the offensive brass and the head coach, listen, you need to do this with him versus this hat, and you do this, that, and the third. They could have, you know, that could have been a phone call. But getting him down there to talk and kind of get it, that's a whole other thing. Uh, but there's like I said, it's it's different uh, thought processes on the Gruden thing. I think ultimately John Gruden, uh, for the several years that he was the head coach of the Raiders, and he had Carr there, he got the absolute best out of Carr, including I think the final year that him and Carr was together. Carr almost had five thousand yards that year. Now, granted, the yard, the passing yards was up, the interceptions was also up. So he was throwing a lot because you know he had to. You know, the team, they weren't a very complete team. You know, they were still, even though Gruden was there trying to build them and make them into something, they still had some issues. But Carr overall is a very talented quarterback. And with the proper guidance, if we can do just some of what Chucky was doing with him in Oakland and at the same time getting them to keep them interceptions down, because I think he had double digit interceptions, but he's still like a nine or 10 interceptions uh, between his touchdowns. So if we can get him to keep his, his interceptions down a bit. I'm, I wouldn't be mad at the fact that if he throws for 27, 28 touchdowns versus 10 picks or 12 picks even at, that's not bad to me. But in the end, but if he's healthy and in the Saints system for all the weeks, man, for the entire season, you're looking at, he, you're looking at 40, 47, 4,800 yards. I wouldn't be surprised if the guy hit 5,000 yards in his first year with the Saints. I wouldn't be surprised. You know, if you look at everything the Saints have in a wide open offense, they're going to be promoting Derek Carr to get that damn ball down the field. So I wouldn't be surprised if him slinging it and averaging 230, 240, 250 yards a game at least because that's his style of play is to get the ball up the field. Explosives. But that being said, what's the thought process on this interview I just played right here? And I don't really listen to Bobby Abel. No disrespect to Bobby Abel. He kind of he tends to meander too much for me. <clears throat> into stuff that, you know, and, and starts cheerleading a bit for stuff at times. And I, you know, that's just his style, but it's okay. But what do you guys think about that? Put it in the chat. Let me know how you guys. <laughs> Shout out to you, man. Uh, who was, who said that, man? I just happened to peek up at that. At 504 Cole says <laughs> he'd be drunk. <laughs> hey, but shout out to Bobby Abel, man. We went down to his restaurant, uh, the Cajun, what is it called? The Cajun Cannon. Man, listen, man, it was good. Uh, when Low was down here and, and the Falcons got beat, uh, <laughs> we we me 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 and Low and his wife and, and we all went down there and my girl. We all went to uh, down there and we went and ate uh, at the Cajun Cannon. It was good, man. You know, I gotta give him a shot. Matter of fact, my my mother and my my mother, happy birthday to her. She, her birthday was yesterday. 
Happy birthday to your mom. Uh, she was, um, she went down there and had her birthday dinner at the Cajun Cannon. So yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I referred to, I said, my, they actually pretty decent. But anyway, what do you guys think about the comments that was made here uh, about it? Do you agree from a football standpoint, it makes sense, but a lot of people kind of touchy on the other stuff and rightfully so understanding that. I don't know the particulars behind it in terms of the man apologizing. I, I don't know. I didn't uh, look into it that far. Maybe I should. Telegraph says con- con- <laughs> consulting. It's a big business. I couldn't consult you on it. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Jared will say, I'm trying to win football games. So whatever it takes, let's go. I hear you, Jared. Reginald says, yes, car was good. Well, Gruden, why not? Pete need all the help he can get family who that family. Tedra says, wouldn't sell my soul for a championship, but that's just me. All right. Telegraph says, I'm looking for every avenue to find the best approach. I'm not a Gruden guy, but he is unique to the situation. Scoop says, a car cuts you off in traffic. After you catch up to it, you call the drive the biggest <laughs> racial slur you can think of. Might you be a racist? <laughs> What it do, pimpin'? All right, all right. What's up, Uncle Do? Shout out to your fam. Shout out to you chiming in from North Carolina. All right, shout out to your fam, Darrell. All right, that's right. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you. Yeah, she had a birthday yesterday, man. And she said, son, I don't know what you be saying on that show, but I sure enjoy watching you. I said, you know what? I might be doing all right if my mama, who's not a football person, can sit there and watch a whole show and not, to, and not know what the hell I'm talking about. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I think I might be hitting on something now. I think I might be a little good there. All right. So should thank y'all. Appreciate y'all, man. Giving us a shout out for a birthday. Yeah, man. Yeah. I went, we, we, we chilled out on Memorial's day. The boys, everybody, we had a fantastic time by the way, man. So shout out to moms and the fam. All right. So yeah, this is, this is cool. This is very cool. Yeah. JT says Peyton Turner better start your bus. All right. It's, not okay who that troll shout out to you but yeah it's just interesting man it's just one of the things now remember uh we'll get through this we'll get through this because it's really a sidebar of anything this is uh if i would consider it even an obstacle i wouldn't even say that much because the man just peeked in to drop some game and then left matter of fact he 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 got in there and, and moved so fast i don't see one picture anybody took about it <laughs> You look about all the people. I'm saying, where was the pictures at? Did anybody take any shots or pictures of Gruden? Gruden moved in so fast and got out of there. You know, that nobody, they, I ain't seen any pictures of him. Did anybody see any photographs of, of Gruden down at the at the Saints facility? Uh, with, did, did y'all see any pictures? I didn't. Maybe I, I was under the rocker last week, but, you know, but I didn't see any pictures of John Gruden down there at the building. I, just to be honest with you on that, I didn't see it. But I, for like I said, man, he dropped some game and got out of town. It'll, I think it'll be a different conversation if the Saints actually hired him to bring him in as a guy. And then what, what happened is the Saints are not an organization. They're not going to see. And this is and I talked about this before. A lot of these organizations, because the Saints trying to get rights. And I think they got the rights to market their team in France. Is it? So, you, you know, and you know, the floor de leaf is, is, a, is a common symbol over there in France. So it's easy for the Saints to take it over there and they're trying to get that international money. So when you when if they lose and you like, man, I ain't giving you jack. <laughs> well, that's all right. Y'all can keep it a little bit. We got France over here representing. Don't you count on it. But anyway, this is the thing. Like they're business people. Their bottom line is to bank out. So they'll pick items and things that are very non-abrasive. You see what I'm saying? They won't pick certain topics that to get too close on in there. And they got guys as a board of them that say, I would stay away from that if I were you, you know, and they do that. So they want to do that. So they appeal to everybody because regardless of what affiliation you are tied to politically or anywhere else, we are all who that's in this building at the end of the day. It's very odd that we can, we can go to the Superdome or go to the nearest Buffalo Wild Wings or whatever and then just have a party and drink and be merry and cheer, cheer for our team together. And then after the game is over, we'll be going back to our lives and tear each other apart. That's really crazy how that works, right? Really crazy how that all works, man, that we can come together in the spirit of sport, but nothing else. You know, that's crazy. But anyway, this is the thing. I, I think if he attached himself to the team, I think the Saints would. I, matter of fact, I know what the Saints would do is they would make him come out with an apology or whatever, if he hadn't apologized, they'll make him re-apologize and they will clean them up 
and then they'll have them a part of some initiate, some initiate uh, 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 organization doing something, whatever it might, the case might be. The, it's it's a damage control. Like they, they, there's organizations that set up like if you do something stupid or you say something that's abrasive, then you comes out. You you they got an organization that operate with damage control that will come out and try to minimize as much as the damage as they clean, clean as they can and clean up the person as much as they can have writing out his stuff, telling them what you can say, what you can't say if you didn't know stuff like that. And that's what they would do with John Gruden if they hired him. So they just wouldn't just bring him in and then add him to the team and then bring a lot of that, uh, the, the, the bad stuff or whatever people don't like about to the team. You see what I'm saying? Cause they don't want that to impact their money. The bottom line is a dollar sign, man. It's <laughs> is what I'm saying. The ultimate, the the ultimate sign is a, is to them is the dollar. The bottom line is a dollar sign, baby. That's what it's about. That's what it is. The bottom line is a dollar sign. He ain't lying. I know. So at the end of the day, man, it's a it, it's it's uh this he was he peaked in the building and left. If they signed him as a coach, I think they would definitely make him go through the you know like you see a lot of people come out and apologize all this kind of stuff. They would definitely do that to John Gruden if he wanted to be down with. The Saints. This just how it go nowadays, man. And that's how businesses operate. They ain't gonna want nobody in there that's gonna come and cause problems and mess with their money. That's just that's just not what they're gonna do. You know? Shout out to the fan. Appreciate the family members uh throwing out the uh happy birthdays to my mom, man. Yeah, she was she she she's like, son, I'm so proud of you, son. Son, I'm so proud. I don't know what you be talking about up there on that show. But I just hear you laughing and, and, and talking, and I just really enjoy it. I say, okay, my thank you, baby. Thank you, baby. All right, Brother Wallace says, bring Gruden on his office coordinator. <laughs> All right. Joe, shout out to you, man. Appreciate y'all, man. All right, Slim says, Pete Carmichael will be the scapegoat if the offense is not up to par. And, yeah, this, that's, that's, uh, that's true, bro. You know, Dennis Allen kind of shielding himself here. And I don't think the Saints, even if this, uh, they would have to fall through the floor, for them to like cut Dennis Allen off, like they have to regress and go from seven and nine to less than what they made to fire him. But he kind of insulated himself pretty well now because Pete Carmichael would get the blame if he doesn't move the Saints offense. And I and I and I and look, fair to Pete, I think Pete gets it done this year because of the car compliment. Carr and Carmichael will work well together with Coach Ronald Curry in the mix. I think the Saints offense, I really do think this, fam, and I've been saying this. I think the Saints are operating with a top 10 offense. They're gonna make and we on paper right now, but I'm from just studying the film and seeing what Carr brings and some of the people they're adding to the team that could possibly be there when we start playing for real. This could have this has the makings of a very of a top ten offense. It really does. I wouldn't be surprised if they're top five. And it's not just the wide receivers. The tight end room is packed. The wide receiver room is packed. Uh, guys like Foster Monroe will bring it. James Washington, a guy nobody really talking about who's healthy. James Washington is flipping good, man. He's good at what he does. And like we have all these signings. Jamal Williams, I keep saying that. Jamal freaking Williams is your backup running back. You got Foster Monroe behind Jawan Johnson running around here. You know, your running back room is off the chain. Even Kamara in or out, they still off the chain. You know, that, I mean, it, it's just the offense to me has what it takes to go to that next level. Carr's a leader. You can't take that away from him. He throws the deep ball. His numbers are good. He's familiar with this system. Can he get it, Q? He did it five times prior with his numbers. When they had five coordinators, Pete makes six coordinators. He adjusted to every offense out there. So you don't think he'll adjust to the Saints QB friendly system? We shall see in time. So anyway, much love to the fam. I'm going to get ready to get on up out of here, man. So I appreciate you guys for chiming in. What's up, Pammy? Shout out to Pammy. All right. Thank you, brother. Trying. Appreciate you. Any quick questions, family? If y'all got any questions, please feel free uh, to kind of chunk them at me. You know, I'll take a few questions before I get on up, up out of this thing, man. But throw a few questions at me, fam. Uh, uh, if you have any questions, I'll answer them uh, right quick. So, yeah, so some of the guys, fam, let me get this picture off of here. Uh, some of the guys, like, and I have the Saints depth chart right here tuned up, right? And like like I said, when you talk about some of the guys the Saints added, and I've just given a few guys, Jamal Williams to me is like a super special signing for the Saints. I mean, phenomenal. The money was good. 
This guy is awesome, man. His energy, his ferocity, great vision. He had 17 rushing touchdowns, average over, I mean, 17 rushing touchdowns. A lot of his touchdowns came in the red zone, you know, and he finds a way to get in that end zone. You're not stopping him six feet, 220 plus pound, pounding speed, cut ability. And he's fun loving. You love Jamal Williams, his personality. He loves the Pokemon thing. I'm not a Pokemon guy. I'm not a Digimon guy. I remember all that stuff. But that's just not, you know, I I, I, I don't rock with all that. You dig? You know, but I, I know about Gundam. I know about, um, uh, 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 you know, Outlaw Star. I know about, uh, uh, what's, what's the one I was watching the other day? Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man, I forgot. See, I, I forgot. But there's a lot of them, man, that I used to watch from back in the day. What was the dude? Uh, damn, I, see, I'm getting I'm getting up there. I forgot the, the the guy that's the assassin. That was one of my favorite ones from watching from back in the day. Y'all y'all know who I'm talking about. But that's but that's cool, brother. You're rocking with that. But Jamal Williams, man, to me, is one of the best ones that's out there, man. Let me tell you something. He's a really solid dude. And this is your backup running back. Big things popping in the city. Another dude, like we talk about James Washington, this brother right here, 27 years old. He has some injuries, but James Washington is good, man. He's a good player. He has some pretty decent years with the Steelers. Like he went there, you can see he had the 44 catch year when he averaged over six, almost 17 yards per catch in that 2019 year. Now he has some injuries, but this guy got speed. His hands, let me tell you something. James Washington is flipping good, and the Saints added him to their team. So as you marching through some of the depth chart, and he's not the starters. These are the guys behind the starters. Then you add this guy with Foster Monroe. Very solid tight end that can block as well as, you know, he can block and catch the ball. Soft hands, nose car, you know, has some good years with the Raiders, you know, and what he was doing. Matter of fact, in 2022, he had his best year, 54 catches. Averaged almost 13 yards per catch for Foster Monroe. And he's a LSU guy. He's a hometown kid and he's back. So, I mean, I'm really proud and happy for Foster Monroe. Plus, he's a fighter, man. He fought through that damn cancer. So, for people that's dealing with that affliction, Foster Monroe is a person that people can look to and say, hey, man, never give up. Look what Foster Monroe done did. So, this is just few of the guys I'm talking about from the offense that I really like. When we talk about Jamal Williams and James Washington, Foster Monroe, these are guys that are veteran guys that will be solid contributors to him. So I really want to see what James Washington fit among these other guys. And then when you start talking about all these young guys that we like a lot, man, all I could, all I could tell you, man, is that I'm looking very, I'm looking forward to all of the fantastic stuff that's coming from us from an offensive standpoint and car, man, all of the weapons we, that we have, should make for interesting football. Let's see. So JT says, Q, do you think Peyton Turner is a bust? <laughs> I won't say Peyton Turner is a bust right now, uh, 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 brother JT. I, I wouldn't say he's a bust right now, even though I think for his career, he just has three sacks in the three, you know, I think well, this is his third year of being here, if I'm not mistaken. So, no, I don't. I won't say he's a bust yet, bro. I won't call him a bust yet, even though we know Davenport definitely qualifies as a bust. But Peyton Turner, from my understanding, word on the street is that Peyton Turner is healthy. And even though Granderson is there, the Saints are going to make Peyton Turner earn that job. Now, and you don't get me wrong. Carl Granderson is the safest bet of all of those guys because he is perhaps Carl is ready for a jump. Now, he's been kind of the guy the Saints have kind of been grooming in that position. So now that Davenport's out of the way, remember, Carl Granderson had, what, five and a half sacks last year. And now they got Carl positioned as the guy opposite of Cam. Now, where's, will it stay that way? I don't know. But Carl Granderson, man, is a guy that really grew up in the Saints defense. So that'll be a good question to see where he is in the turn. Could he be a full-time starter? Because he's been a damn good reserve guy can he start full-time you know we'll see but he definitely have the motor he has some he has the speed and ability he got to be able to play the run as well as the pass and Carl Grandison we shall see but Peyton Turner's a guy that got to really step up and show what he can do this year because he does have the first round grade and the Saints does 
they want to see him earn it, man. To be honest, but I'm not gonna call him a bust yet, bro. I, I'm not gonna do that just yet. I right, Tedra says used to be big, QT. <laughs> Yeah, I've been slimming down, man. Let me tell you something, bro. I thank you for that, man. Hey, listen, bro. Uh, you know, I've been kind of jumping on some game, brother. Let me tell you something. I've been listen for the family members, man. I drink me a glass of uh of pomegranate juice uh, every day. That's y'all look that up. That's pretty good for the family. It really been helping me out. Um, I eat my, I, you know, I snack on my pumpkin seeds. That's really big as well. I was talking to a friend of mine, letting her know that, you know, about those great the attributes that come with. I've been drinking my alkaline water. I've been doing my little walking, my little running. You know, I've been uh, doing my sit ups and put ups. So, yeah, it's it's time, man. You know, I'm 40. How much? I'm 40, 46 years old. I'm 46. That's right. 46. So, you know, as I get older, man, I'm taking my health a lot more serious than what I did before. I played football before and I kind of have a busy schedule. So at times I don't have time to kind of work out but I'm making it work. You see what I'm saying? Cause there's opportunities that's, that's moving up in the future that I have to be able to get right for physically. So I have to be in the best shape that I possibly can be. Plus it's a component as a parent and my children playing basketball with them and doing, being active with them. And you know, you got to stay on your square. You got to make sure you're uh, in good shape. So those things really help me out. So, you know, it's cool. All right. So anyway, uh, thank you for that, bro. Shout out to you. Uh, Tedra for that says, uh, you know anything about Adrian Fry? Yeah, they added Adrian Fry kind of late in the game, man. I want to say he's on here, man. Where is Adrian Fry at? I oh, know he's not even listed on this list here. Yeah, they kind of added him a defensive back. I heard he made a few plays uh, in the um, in practice. So, you know, he was kind of a late addition to the party. Let me see if I can pull up his um, – pull him up because I think he should be on here somewhere. Right, let me see. Uh or, uh, is it? I don't even see him on here. Nah, they must have didn't add him on here. They got every damn body on here. I don't see him on there. Yeah. No, he ain't. There he is. Okay, he don't even have a picture. Yeah, Texas Tech. There he is. Okay, there you go. Adrian Fry. Six feet tall, defensive back, uh, 200 uh, feet. I mean, 200 feet. 200 pounds out of Texas Tech and a rookie. He has some plays that's going on that's interesting about Adrian Fry is that I'm going to have to study some film on his brother. I heard about him. I heard about some of the stuff that he was, where he came from out of Houston. And I probably had to be su- a subject of when we do like a on Q big Q, uh, 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 film study on Adrian Fry to see what he, uh, brings to the table. But you know, we'll see man on that, you know, that you got to watch out for these guys that kind of sneak up on the team. Cause I think he was the, one of the last guys they picked up on. So yeah, we're going to have to look into him. All right. Thank you, fam. All right, uh, f- uh, pr- shout out to you, Five Cool Says Q. You're a legend. The whole Who That Nation probably. Oh yeah, thank you, fam. Appreciate that. Wouldn't be nothing if it wasn't for you guys, man. I always got to give you guys much. You know, pre- every piece of credit y'all give me, I throw it right back to you, man. Because if it wasn't for you guys, man, uh, just being just diehard family members and supporters for all these years, man, where would I be, man? You know, without you guys. So I lift you up on my shoulders, just like you lift me up. I'm always elevating and thanking you guys, man, for making all this very possible for real. So thank you right back at you, friend. All right. So, uh, uh, Devon says he's approaching bus status. He still got a little time, bro. Troll says Q, do you see the video clip of Bryce young, of uh, uh, Bryce young? You talking about the one, uh, troll when him getting the passes batted down. Is that the one you're talking about? <laughs> the one where he getting the passes batted down. Is that the one you're talking about? He was, you know, he was getting his passes batted down in the, in practice, but yeah, I've seen some footage of, of uh, Bryce Young really looking good out there, man. So yeah, I, I, I'm messing with him, but I think the kid is special. And the Saints should be fine this year in the NFC South. But let me tell you, every year after this year, it's going to get increasingly difficult from Carolina and Atlanta. So the Saints definitely, whatever they established this year, they got to keep it going, man. For real, it's a lot of stuff happening. That's right, Scoop. Black Seed, all I've turned my my mom and them on to that, man. They sing them praises of that all the time, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Tug graph. Let me tell you, man, that, let me tell you, fam, that is, that's the move. Now look into it. Scoop says the lower case Q is going to (laughs) have, yeah, they, yeah, man, they're getting big, man. My boy's getting big. Slim says, will Jesse James beat out Lucas crawl? That's a great question, Slim. And the thing is, bro, is it. And let me put the depth chart to kind of assist me with that, bro, because 
as you can see right here, the Saints added, they updated the depth chart. And this is ESPN, by the way. But Johns, they got Juwan Foster Monroe, Taysom Hill at the flex position. And Jesse James already penciled in. The thing about it is Jesse James is an established veteran. So why would the Saints add Jesse James to the team today? Why would they bring him on? Being they did just sign Foster Monroe not too long ago. You know, we looking pretty good about this thing, right? What's the mentality here? Are the Saints now? The question when I when I heard him sign Jesse James, I was like, okay, cool. What, what are we doing? Are we operating with what? Uh, are we doing multiple? T- I know we got the two tight end room, but are we doing anything more than that? You see what I'm saying? You know. So, and also the Taysom Hill, you know, he's a it's a flex position, but you know they put him wherever they feel that they need to have him. Like like I said, Taysom Hill, he operates as a running back most of the time. Like a lot of his yardage comes by way of the running attack, you know, a few times last year. And I showed this statistically when people saying, Q, he a quarterback. Like, how you a quarterback and you threw the ball, attempted to throw the ball, what, 15 times in the entire year? Now, he could have had more than that, but he, you know, the passes will taste him, had an opportunity to throw. You know, rare back, don't go through no progressions. He'll just take the hell off and go and pick up the first down that way. So a lot of his yards came by way of him running as a running back. I've seen Taysom Hill block as a, I mean, he was a fullback. He was a running back. He's a tight end. He was a wide receiver and he was behind the center as a quarterback at times. And he did throw the ball like what? 10 times last year, 11 times. I think it was Yeah, had like 10 or 11. I don't even know if that was that, that many completions. Matter of fact, let's just look it up. I don't even think of that many. How many passes did he throw as a quarterback last year? It wasn't that many. See, he got his receiving stats in 2022. 16 games, he had nine catches on 13 targets for 77 yards. He had two touchdowns. This is as a receiver. Rushing, he had 96 carries for 575 yards with seven touchdowns, six yards per carry. That's Taysom Hill. Like I said, when I had to dispouse a lot of this foolishness about him being a quarterback, I like the dude is a running back. He gets all of his yards, and you can see it right there. He gets his yards running the football. He turns into a running back. He don't throw the ball that much. Now, look, 2022, to show you what, 16 games, he had 19 pass attempts. He threw the ball, 30, well, 19 pass attempts and completed 13 of them. So there you go. 13 passes he completed for 244 to 240 yards and had two touchdowns throwing the ball. Right? He has 68.4% completion percentage on 13 of 19 for the entire season. For the whole damn year. You know, so. Like I said, he even has some return stats right here, man. He even had a few return stats. Kickoffs, returned the ball three times for 69 yards. So Taysom Hill does it all, man. He does it all. So, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens there. The Saints have st- – and that's the, the key to it. They're so damn versatile. But to answer your question, Slim, I say chances are probably is Jesse James. If he stays healthy and, and just become the blocker and, and the guy that, you know, he can make it interesting. Could the Saints keep, I don't know, I don't see the Saints keeping four active tight ends, and I just don't see that. I, I really don't see that, even though I, I see the Saints really want to be a team that can use three tight end sets, you know? And then who would be the best of your blocking tight ends if you said, okay, um, we're going to just have Jawan Johnson, Foster Monroe, Taysom Hill, and Jesse. Which one of those guys, based on the film that you studied on them, represents the best of the blockers of the tight ends. So it, it, it brings a bunch of questions to my mind. It's like, I don't see him keeping four guys there, even though, you know, I would love to see the Saints use the three tight end look because they have their tight ends. They have three different styles of tight ends. You got Foster Monroe. That's really the traditional looking tight end. The guy, he's a traditional looking tight end that blocks and catches well. Jawan Johnson is that streamlined guy that can block as well, but you can kind of slide him out, separate him you know, from the offensive line, have him operating there. And then you got Taysom Hill, which is the flex guy. You can move him all over the field. So you have three different styles of tight ends that you can employ. And then you got Jesse, Jesse James, who's just a big physical blocker who can catch the ball in the red zone for you. He's six foot seven, 260 plus pounds. He's the biggest of all the tight ends there. I think Lucas is six, six. So we got massive guys, but if it came down to it, bro, between Lucas Crawl and Jesse James, man, you got to put Jesse ahead of him because of the experience if he stays healthy. But still in all, the question then beckons is how many tight ends do you keep on your active roster? So thanks for that question, Slim. Appreciate you, bro. 
All right, uh, any more questions, fam, before I get ready to kind of bounce on out of this thing, man? I don't see him keeping uh, – T-Roy said who's going to be the kicker. I think Will Lutz is going to be the kicker, fam. I think Will Lutz uh, is going to retain his kicker status. Uh, they already got rid of Alex Quavedo to bring on uh, both the new fullback we had. Uh, we, you know, you're getting Jesse James and then the fullback, Jake Bogus. So you bring them on and then you get rid of Alex Quavedo to open up a spot for him. And then you still have Blake Groupe who was missing all kinds of kicks, but you know, you expect that early. Hopefully he centers himself, but in the end it's going to be Will Lutz. And that's the thing when you bring in two extra kickers to see where Will Lutz is, Will Lutz is a seven year guy. Last year he had the co- he was kind of coming back off the core surgery that he had the year prior. And his numbers were really bad. As you can see, his numbers dropped big time. He usually is 82% field goal percentage dropped to 74%. That was eye opening. So, the, and then he's in the final year of his agreement. So, you know, you will want to see him step his game up and take it to the next level there, man. Cause we really need to see, uh, you know, kind of better from Will Lutz here. And, you know, they got the statistics lined up here from this regular season, last regular season, you can see where he was missing out from between 20 and 29 yards out. He was six for six. Perfect. 30 to 39 yards out. He was nine of 11, not too bad. And where he really struggled on is anything beyond 40 yards. Like when the saints were way out there, Will Lutz was four of eight between 40 or 49. That's 50 percent. And then he was four. He was actually better from 50 plus out. He was four of six from there. And then he hit all of his extra points. He had 102 points combined. But his field goal percentage was 74.2 percent. That's the lowest by far in his career, even when his in his very first year. He was always a guy that was 82 percentile somewhere up in there. When you drop that low to 74 percent and you're making that kind of bread, then the people are going to be looking at you uh, funny style. So in the end, I think Will Lutz still gets it, man. I think he still gets the uh, the, the call to be the guy, man, unless injuries occur. So, you know, that's my take on it. All right. Shout out to the fam. Thank you, T-Roy. Shout out. Yeah, I know. I know Slim. He still be out there throwing punts, man. You know, <laughs> that's why I take taste him to throw that damn ball, man. You throw it way up to the ceiling, man. And then, you know, so, I mean, yeah, he don't, he don't have no feathery touch on them pads. I seen him throw a really nice ball one time, but they far and few in between. Because he don't really throw it. You got to throw it often. You know, if you're a quarterback, you got to get into throwing the ball and getting a touch on the football, knowing when you need to, where you need to place the football, how much of a touch you got to put on it. If you need to put some stank on the ball to get it between the tight window, all that stuff, you have to kind of think very, you know, in, in, in microseconds when the play's playing out, you got to be able to, you know, make that that judgment call in your head. Then there's the thing is the a play clock as a quarterback. You got to be able to understand, you know, clock and, 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 and understand how much time you got one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, while the clock is going off, you're going through your progressions. And if you don't see something that you like, you got to get the ball off to your hot route or dump it off to your guy up the backfield. You can't, you know, if you see guys coming in, you can't, uh, uh, you know, see if you can get rid of the ball, just throw it, you know, throw the ball out of bounds or throw an incompletion to save you from losing yardage or per- possibly hurting yourself, uh, taking a sack to kick you out of field goal range. Like what we did several times last year with that, with Andy Dalton taking sacks to hurt the saints field goal chances. It was just, he took sacks, you sacks and you didn't need to take them. That was the thing. I'm so glad that guy is gone. I really am. I'm so glad that guy is gone. Andy Dalton, I'm speaking about. So glad. He would take sacks you didn't need. He didn't even need to take. You know, he didn't need to take. He could have just threw the ball out of bounds or threw it at a wide receiver feet or whatever. He would literally take sacks he didn't have to take and would knock the Saints out of field goal range several times during the season. It was so maddening to me. that I'm so damn glad that guy is gone. I really am, man. I'm so glad. Tuck said we're looking for depth and competition. We have some positive salary cap. Yes, a lot to build on. So this is this is probably not the end result right here. 504 Coast says any uh, any post June first cuts you see the Saints signing could be uh you know there's some stank on the hunt for, on the Hunter Renfro thing. We'll have to wait and see about that. We'll have to wait and see on that the Hunter Renfro thing because 
the Saints wide receiver room can get another player there. You know, and who would you put in the street? You could put either Key Kirk Wood or Traquan Smith. He's better than either one of those guys. So it's Hunter Renfro a thing. They've been talking about this for some time now. And it makes sense because it's another wide receiver that Derek Carr is familiar with. And remember, the Saints are pretty much giving Dennis Allen whatever he wants. And if he wants Derek Carr to have these guys that he's he's comfortable with, he's there. the Saints are showing that they're willing to do that because they understand that if they don't get back to the playoffs and they don't improve this year, it will be some hell to pay in the in the Big Easy. They just know that. They just know it. They know it. They know it. He ain't lying. That's right. So anyway, with that being said, oh, oh hold on, I'm sorry. Scoop got one. He said, does DA play more dime defense with all these talented DBs? I don't think so, bro. I think um, I think more than likely Dennis Allen, remember he said he was, he's going to do the 43 and the 34 and all these diff- different defenses. And I've said, nah, you ain't. You're going to stick to what you like. It's very simple. It's the modified nickel, which worked really well. We had Chauncey Gardner Johnson there. Can Alante Taylor bring that? Well, and, and I'm asking this, and we pretty much know what Alante Taylor is capable of. He's one of the versatile, most versatile defensive backs that we do have. We know that he can play either cornerback position. He can play inside, and now he did it last year. We also realized that he can move and play the safety position. Very versatile. But people kept saying, Q, I don't see him as a slot guy. And I was like, fam, listen, Elante Taylor is going to work in that slot, fam. He's going to work in that slot. Dennis Allen is not going to make too many changes to his defense. And Paulson Adebo, even though Paulson Adebo did have a kind of an off year, that was his sophomore year. So you would expect Paulson Adebo to have an off year. Now, for, don't forget who he was in the prior year. That first year, Adebo looked really good. Now, watch what Paulson Adebo turns into in his third year. We know Elante Taylor. Number one, he's 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 a tall fellow. He's incredibly tough. You know, he is really intelligent and he picks up stuff very well. Like and he's like he's fundamental. He tackles well and he's just getting better and better and better and better and better. And besides, like the graphic shows, he's a second round pick. He has to see the field. So you got high picks, defensive backs, both Marshawn Lattimore and Paulson Adebo. Uh, and Alante Taylor. So he definitely the position of need for Alante Taylor because there is no other defensive. He's not going to sit behind no musty ass uh, Bradley Roby. I'm sorry. So Alante Taylor is the future of the position. The Saints drafted him uh, <laughs> knowing that Chauncey Gordon and Johnson contract was coming up. And I was telling people at the time, I was like, man, this dude is 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 for Chauncey Gordon and Johnson's position. Ah, Q, he's going to play safety. I like he can play safety. He can do whatever you want him to do. But at the end of the day, he is for Chauncey Gardner Johnson. And then, of course, you see what happened. Saints got rid of Chauncey Gardner Johnson. And then the Eagles got rid of Chauncey Gardner Johnson. So, what did both of those teams know about Chauncey? Chauncey needs to pump, to pump his brakes on all that other stuff, man. You're a little out of control on some of this other stuff. And you could get the money that you want. But, you know, like I said, man, it's a certain way you got to conduct and handle yourself. And it's something that's going on where both these teams, he's a talent. So how are these people not bringing him back? And then he got what? What he got for it? Like six, what? How much money did they give him? Seven, eight million? I, I don't know. But it wasn't what he wanted. I knew that for certain. So he got to have that mentality. You got to change and understand it's all about business. and Stop talking about imaginary people hating on you. And pe- people going to say whatever, whatever they want to say. You can't stop them from saying that. You know, you just use it as motivation and prove upon your game. And a lot of times if you listen to people, it ain't it's not always hate because, you know, it could it's constructive criticism. A guy could be talking about one aspect of your game you need to change. You don't have to know the man to understand what he's saying. If, if it's a complete stranger and he's giving you some real giblets of game. That's right. I said giblets. That's right. I said giblets of game sprinkling down on you. And if it makes sense, take it and use it. It's free game. It don't cost you nothing like you getting that free game. You ain't paying a damn thing, but listening, you know, your time a little bit to that. So if somebody giving you some insight, they don't have no agenda to grind on you. They don't have any agenda to smash against you with. If a guy's saying you need to work on, you know, uh, your, your your skill, your attitude, a lot of time you got the talent, but you got to work on that attitude, man. You got you to gotta pump your brakes on your attitude, turn it to a real professional. And I mean inside and out in terms of how you conduct your business and your brand as well. So, you know, like it's a lot of guys like to rap and all this type of stuff. 
people are going to be slow to type to kind of attach their brand to you. You got to watch what you're saying, how you, you see what I'm saying? It's all about business. And remember, we're not, uh, in, we, we're not totally out here by ourselves. Like we like to believe that we are uh, a separate operating entities. You're a part of the whole. You're a part of the whole. You're a part of the whole. And everybody else makes it all around you work. And they have a role to play. You have a role to play. And you find where you can find that harmony at. And then you play your role. They play their role. And you have synergy. You have chemistry. So free game is what we give given. But Alante Taylor is a very sharp person. I expect a, a lot from Alante Taylor over time. So it's pretty cool. Another really good giblet of game I like is Jordan Howden. I was studying film on Jordan Howden. And what makes Jordan Howden the fifth round draft pick safety we picked up this year out of Minnesota? If you watch the tape from Howden, it's just free game. I'm just dropping, just giving my thought process on. He is the only drafted safety that we had in a while, fam. Y'all remember the last safety we drafted, fam? Tell me, this is a trivia question to the Who That Nation. I want you guys to tell me, tell me, tell me. I want y'all to tell me what what was the who was the last safety the New Orleans Saints drafted, fam? Who was the last safety the Saints drafted? Outside, not, obviously in the past, not Jordan Howden. But who was the last safety the New Orleans Saints drafted? Put it out there. This guy is, and this guy will be a force in the future for the Saints. Now, even though right now you got a very cluttered and crowded safety room, let me tell you something. JT Gray is a special team safety. You look at Jonathan Abrams, veteran safety, one-year deal, right? Lonnie Johnson Jr., one-year deal, right? Smoke Monday, they got him missing the team, period. They got him on the back end. He got to step up. We got to see what Smoke could do, you know? But you got a guy that might dip in the safety room with Lonnie Johnson Jr. You got Jonathan Abram like him. So Jordan Howden, to be honest, which is a guy that we're looking at, could be very special. That's right. That's right. The family nil, the last safety we picked. That was high was Marcus Williams, right? Think about that, fam. And then prior to Marcus Williams, yeah, you talk about Kenny Vaccaro, but there were other guys too. But the last time we took a safety was Marcus Williams. It was. Yeah. So I want to say, so yeah, it's, it's I'm a, let me see if I can bring up the, the, the chart. Hold on here. fam. Y'all got me thinking about this. Cause I was, and I'm saying to myself, like, man, damn, a couple of years ago, like the saints really need to look at getting young, you know, getting some help in the safety room, young guys. Cause I remember the saints drafted two safeties several years ago under Sean Payton. And you know, it didn't work out too good. Y'all remember that? Hold on, let me see if I can bring it up. Let me see if I can bring it up, baby. But let, yes. Hold on. Yeah, I was looking. I was like, man, that would. And then looking at Jordan Howard, I was like, man, why would we take a safety with all these other people? But fam, Lonnie Johnson Jr., Jonathan Abram on one year deals. JT Gray has a multiple year deal, but he's a special teams guy. We know Jordan Howden is a guy that could really help them uh, and might play some for you this year, depending on what it looks like. Marcus May still has to go through that whole situation with the DUI, I think, from the Jets. Tyron Matthews getting a little old in the two, so he got a couple years left on his deal. There's also the injury factor that's involved with these guys because, you know, Mar- Marcus May missed six games last year. Okay, so listen, let me kind of sprinkle this game on free game, fam. Free game, free game, right? Free game. All right, so here go the Saints drafted list right here. This is the Saints. Let me see if I can kind of make that big. And I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to skirt out. All right, so this is the Saints' entire draft history, right? As you can see, that's our guy, Jordan Howden, right here, 2023, uh, 2023, fifth round pick. Now, we go back in the day. Now, we know the last, well, you, we talking about Alante Taylor, obviously. I'm looking past Alante Taylor, right? We talk about safeties, even though you can say, well, Q, he does play the safety position. But you go beyond Alante Taylor to the Peyton Turner draft. Boy, that was a crap draft right there, wasn't it? Actually, P. 
Pete Werner's keeping the Peyton Turner draft. Well, Paulson Adebo. I, I redraw that. We still got a lot of players on here. Turner, Werner, Adebo, Young, and Baker are still on the team. Uh, anyway, you keep going past the 21 draft, the 20 draft. You go to the, the 2019 draft, and then you see the last time the Saints picked up a safety was Chauncey Gardner-Johnson back in 2019, right? And Saquon Hampton. Y'all remember Hampton? <laughs> Ah, y'all remember Saquon Hampton? Yes, Saquon Hampton fam. So it was it's cool to be able to get these guys. And like I say, even though Chauncey Gardner Johnson was listed, as you can see, he was listed as a safety. You know, they had him playing in the in the corner, but they had Saquon Hampton. So in that year, we had Eric McCoy, the fourth round, and then in the fourth round, we got Chauncey Gardner Johnson and Saquon Hampton, the safety out of Rutgers. And then Alizé Mack, who I think he just caught on with somebody, the tight end, remember Alizé Mack from Notre Dame? And there go your boy Caden Ellis bringing up the rear in the 2019 draft. But prior to that, we go back to this draft, fam. This is what I was thinking about. The 2018 draft with Marcus Davenport, Traquan Smith still hanging in there. Traquan, the only one from the 2018 draft hanging in there. Third round pick. You see Natrell Jamerson and Kareem Moore. Put one in the chat if you guys remember that. Put one in the chat if you guys remember that. And then the 2017 draft is Marcus da- uh, Marcus Williams. As you can see, he was a second-round draft pick right here. So, yes, fam, y'all remember them? Y'all remember Natrell Jamerson and Kareem Moore? Y'all remember those guys? The Saints picked them up? That was pretty funny, man. Just a little trivia on that drop. And if Saquon Hampton, Kareem Moore, Natrell Jamerson, Matter of fact, Sean Payton brought Natrell Jamerson back a couple of years ago to give him another shot and put him in the street. I remember him going over to, to Carolina playing with them. He just never developed into much. So they must they, they messed up on that one. That was a pretty ugly draft, that 2018 draft, wasn't it, fam? And, you know, Bo Scott, I think Bo Scott's still in the league. But, yeah, fam, that was, that was the last time, man. I just wanted to sprinkle a little game on him, Natrell Jamerson. How about that stuff? How about that? All right, so fam, listen, James, what's up, brother James? He says, uh, Q, they need to sign a dependable, solid veteran linebacker, LOL, but Jesse James, a good pickup, though, but our linebacker room is thin. They're going to wait till uh, they back out against the, they back up against the wall and we get great. <laughs> no, Quan hadn't signed any, it, no, 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 they ain't signing anybody, man. They're not signing anybody, fam. They, uh. That he ain't signing. Quan, Quan Alexander is still available, fam. He's still going to be out there. All right, he's still out there. So, uh, yeah, James, I mean, we'll see what they do, man. But, yeah, they got an extra tight end for the room. And, and truth of the matter is they might still believe, like, one of these guys might be a serious con- – they, they really do believe in Zach Bowen, bro. Why else would you not, you know, do it? And he's a guy the Saints put a third-round draft pick on. So, we'll see a lot. We'll, we'll see what happens with Zach Bowen. They thinking Kate Nellis for Zach Bowen, perhaps? Zach Bond was hanging out with the with the the Watts, TJ and JJ. Remember that? So I don't know exactly what the philosophy on Zach Bond. We just got to keep an eye out on it. But remember, they did resign Andrew Dowell, who was a guy that worked several years ago. He was a good special teams guy for him. Gotten some live action, had some positive plays, you know. And then in the end, they got these young guys like Nick Anderson and uh, and uh, Anthony Orgy that they're happy about. But a veteran linebacker. There's still a lot of time left, bro. And I'm really pushing. Hopefully the Saints will add another interior defensive uh, player, uh, a nose tackle perhaps, or a, a very girthy interior veteran defensive tackle or nose tackle to the mix before the, the mandatory camp start. Perhaps they add another solid veteran to the mix of linebackers that we currently have. There's still a lot of time uh, left to play as we get going. When the, the mandatory camps show up, then – you might see something different. So still a lot going on, man. Still a lot going on. All right. Shout out to the fam. What's up, brother? Dev 84 John. Shout out to you, my brother. Appreciate you. Uh, (laughs) Pecan says, unfortunately, yes, I do. Yeah, I know. It wasn't much. Brother, what's up, General Gouda? Shout out to you, man. Appreciate you, fam, for being there. Anyway, let me get on up out of here, man. I appreciate all you guys. What's up, Richard? What's up, Kerry? Shout out to you, fam. Appreciate you. I'll see you, man. Bobby Space Ghost, Travis. I see you, fam. Night Boy Larry, what's poppin', baby? Uh, Princess Lewis, shout out to you as well. Good to see y'all in the building, man. Much love to everybody, man. Thank y'all. What's up, brother Mario? Shout out to you, fam. Appreciate you as well. 
So I'm going to get out on that, man. I'm going to pop up and holler at y'all on the Thursday stream tomorrow, fam. We're going to do it again and have some fun with it. But once again, the Saints make it pop. They add Jesse James and Jake Boggess, the fullback to the team, man, uh, to add some competition in them that room. So I'm going to get out on that. I appreciate y'all, man. Much love to the fam. Please feel free to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and check out the link tree. Join the Patreon, man, and help out the stream, man. It, it really makes a hell of a difference. I'm going to holler at y'all on the flip side. Who that? And I'm out. Yeah. Huh? Boogie like Benson, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Long as I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose or winning, I'm a who that. Sports coma, yeah, this is where we do that. 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 Huh? Boogie like Benson, I'm a who that. I'm a who that. Sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Somebody please better help. Running this thing like Elf. Thank God every day I'm not a felt. Go to YouTube live with Big Q and the guys. If you ain't ride or die, the bandwagon get flipped. Been marching in, that was way for the ring. I was yelling out your shame for the championship. Fucking on town, duck down. Falcons pluck, get shut down. Panthers ain't much to touchdown. The vision really belong to us now. So much hate on the Saints, you could probably tell. Ever since Bounty Gate hit the NFL, when things seem fishy, then you probably smell. The crooked referees are Roger Goodell. Yeah. Fucking like this, and I'm a who that. Every day I'm living, I'm a who that. Lose or winning, I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. Where we do that. Eh. Where we do that. Eh. Where we do that. Where we do that. Where we do that. Eh. Boogie like this, and I'm a who that. It's the sports coma, this is where we do that. We do that. You're listening to the sports coma yeah. with Big Q and the guys on the PRO right. Media Network. Daily.com. That's right, the who that daily.com. Your one stop shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelican, LSU Tigers, even the top flight boxing. So if you're a who that and you're looking for a place to stay up on your team, the who that daily.com is your site. The who that daily.com for the sport who that in all of us. TSC Unleashed is available on YouTube. Find TSC Unleashed. All the latest news, football, basketball, boxing, and entertainment news. We cover it all on TSC Unleashed. Every week, please feel free to subscribe to TSC Unleashed on YouTube. Pro Cafe, that's right. Pro Cafe is your new number one source for 24-7, seven-day-a-week, lo-fi music, and more. Whether you're hard at work or hard at play, let Pro Cafe be your life soundtrack. Subscribe now at Pro Cafe on YouTube. Peace. This video is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Sending data over an encrypted internet connection is like sending a postcard that everybody can see. When you're connected to an unencrypted network, 
whether that's your phone, your computer, your tablet, your TV, et cetera, you're sending countless of pieces of really precious data that can be seen or intercepted by all, all sort of parties before it reaches its intended destination. But a VPN or a virtual private network creates a secure tunnel between your device and the internet. In other words, it puts an envelope around your postcard so they can't sneak a peek at your private correspondence. The ExpressVPN protects you from spies who use your data for their own nefarious purposes. ExpressVPN prevents your ISP from seeing your private browsing activity. It also stops governments and large corporations and websites that constantly surveil you and harvest your data for their own agendas. ExpressVPN gives you unrestricted access to all parts of the internet so you can watch shows in other countries and even get certain discounts. So to get ExpressVPN, just click the link below. When you use the Pelican PostScan report, you get three, that's right, three months free of ExpressVPN.